All right, pick them apart. Is there any one of those that you just think is egregiously wrong? Well, I don't know if we can throw all five back on the screen, but I got to tell you something, Colin Cowherd. This might be a five for five. I love four of them. And I'm uh, the one, so Thunder win one series max is less an indictment on them and more the fact that in round two, they're going to be playing Dallas because Dallas is going to beat the Clippers, as you are saying in point three. And I think Dallas is going to the conference finals at a minimum. So I one and three were in total lockstep. The Lakers are going to win tonight, and then we can talk more about a Lakers Nuggets series, yeah. which I think is more intriguing than people give it credit for. And this is not an indictment on the Knicks, but it is really a testament to yeah. what Thibodeau has done and what Jalen Brunson yes. has done. But because of the injuries and because they play so hard all year, yep. they don't really have an extra gear for the postseason. And so I totally agree with one, three, four, and five. Number two, I could see happening, and I think that the Timberwolves trying to work back in Carl Anthony Towns. We have to see how that goes. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick that one, but one, three, four, and five, I love. And the Sun, <coughs> pardon me, the Suns beating the Timberwolves certainly plausible. I'm not sure if it's my pick, but I think those are actually really good bold predictions. Okay, I'm going to throw this at you. I said if you have an MVP vote, SGA, Luka, or Jokic that you can make an argument on Luka because of this. First of all, all of them statistically are great. But Luka has been able to overcome, like LeBron did briefly, Kyrie's drama. And it's not a small thing. It, he unraveled the Celtics. Brooklyn was a mess. Considered difficult or a bust in Cleveland. LeBron solved that Rubik's Cube for a couple years, and then it went sideways. And Kyrie goes to Luka. It was a little noisy year one. Actually, I think I'd give it to Luka because I think valuable means what did I overcome? I think that's a real thing. And if Luka gets it, I have no problem. Your thoughts? Well, I agree with a ton of that. I uh, Listen, J-Mac's been calling Luka the best player in the world for at least a few months now. And as much as I love Luka, I don't think that's a title he can hold until he at least shows up in a finals. But I agree with you, and I think I agree with J-Mac. He's the MVP this year. And it is what you said. Now, Kyrie deserves credit himself for not creating drama, for playing as outstanding as he did, by his standards having a relatively healthy season. And Kyrie had a great year. But what your point, which is Kyrie has never been a part of winning basketball except for the three years alongside LeBron James, and now he is again. So Luka does get credit for that. He also just had a bananas season. In, the, in all of NBA, since the merger in the NBA, the only people to ever, in a full season, average more points per game than Luka did this year are Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and James Harden. That's the list. You add to it that he had nine rebounds and nine assists, so he created, you know, 50-plus combined points, rebounds, and assists per game. The team was the hottest team in the league the last two months of the year, 15-2 and two in their last 17 games. They then rested games 81 and 82. The team defense got better, and after Kyrie... You don't have a single top 100 player in the league on that roster. They still won 50 games. My ballot would be Luka barely edging out Jokic and then a clear number three in SGA, who I think had a phenomenal season, but not as good as Luka or Jokic. And listen, some people can take issue with this, but when it's as close as Luka and Jokic are, I do give the tie to the guy who hasn't won one yet. Yeah. And if, like, if Jokic had, hadn't won one yet, you'd say, okay, this is definitely his time. It's kind of how I felt last year with Embiid. This is why guys like LeBron and, and Kareem and Jordan, instead of having 10 or 12 MVPs, they have six, five, and four. Because when there's another great player who's having a great season – they, and hasn't won one yet, they typically give it to him. I think Luka, the team won enough games. I think he deserves it. 
Um, I went and watched the Lakers Warriors about 10 days ago because I thought it was the last yeah. chance maybe to see Steph and Clay. And my take after yeah. watching the games was Steve Kerr is running a lot of the offense through Clay Thompson, sending a message to Joe Lake of, please outbid Orlando. We need, we have no size. We need shooters. And Clay had a really good April. Do you think it's Stephen Clay's? I mean, if they lose to Sacramento, I tend to think they'll win tonight, but they can't beat, they won't beat the Pels of the Lakers. Do you think they'll blow that thing up? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, uh, listen, I think tonight's a two and a half point spread. So obviously either team could win. Uh, I think Sacramento is going to win tonight, even though that the Sacramento, since the Malik Monk injury in particular, has not looked great. In that building, this would be the biggest win for the Kings in 20 years because, to your point, I mean, this is a Bay Area, not rivalry, because the Warriors have been so much better, but, you know, that the fans, is, Kings fans don't love Warriors fans, and Warriors fans don't care about Kings fans, so I think this will be a big home court advantage but to your point, Colin, and I don't think this has gotten enough attention, I think we are less than 12 hours away from the final game Steph, Clay, and Draymond play together. I think that Clay is not on the team next year. When Clay said on Draymond's podcast that, you know, of course he wants to stay a warrior, but he has to prioritize things such as his mental health, that made me feel like, oh, he, this has not been fun for him. He is not happy. When you see Steph dealing with the drama he dealt with on the court in the game Draymond got kicked out of, it just feels like this is the last stand. And so, yeah, for what I think this Warriors team is the fourth greatest NBA dynasty ever. Russell's Celtics, Jordan's Bulls, Kareem and Magic's Lakers, and then this Warriors run. I would have that ahead of the Shaq Kobe Lakers. And I think the last game they play together as a threesome is tonight. Yeah. So I want to throw up this new Olympic team going to Paris. There's like one more spot. And I okay. said, I tend to like yeah. new things over old things. But when you put in the dream team against this team, if you took LeBron and Steph off it, and they've been in 11 finals in 13 years. They are clearly the old guard. They have carried this league uh, physically, interest yeah. ratings. When you go old and new, this is a bit of an indictment on our AAU system. <laughs> Team USA is oh, a lot of guys who I don't know if they're in their prime. Jason Tatum, if, will you take the big shot? Booker scores, but they were awful in Phoenix before KD and Chris Paul, I think Dream Team would house these guys in their prime. Okay, well, hold on. That is, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is why, you can't say take LeBron and Steph off it. That's not a thing. You can't be like, hey, take two of the best guys off it, and let's go, let's be, let's not do, I understand, and you don't do this, but a lot of people do, revisionist, and put that back on the screen if we can. Yeah. Revisionist basketball history, 1992, Larry Bird was cooked. He was done. <laughs> it was not prime, not close. His back had given out. True. Magic Johnson had already announced his retirement, okay? Christian Leitner was not in the NBA yet. Chris Mullen was fine. So that's four guys we can kind of dismiss to begin with. Barkley, Malone, Ewing, David Robinson, all those guys, John Stockton, none of them in 1992 had ever been to an NBA Finals. None of them in 1992 had actually ever been close to an NBA Finals. So you have a, on that team, the, the only champions on that team were Jordan, Magic, and Bird, and Magic and was retired, and Bird was about to. So I'm not going to let you all of a sudden be like, oh, you know, back in my day. No, 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 no. And if you give me, if you're telling me I can have th this, like everyone is transported to their apex prime, so you get LeBron from 10 years ago, well, Steph from three years ago, yeah. all of that. That that's a different, but right. same with the dream team. That's a that's a different story. But I don't. I'm not gonna all of a sudden romanticize the 1992 dream team. Got enough credit in the in real time. I don't think we have to now all of a sudden tear down the 2024 dream team to build it up. All right.
You can have Bam out of Bayou. Yeah. I'm going to take David Robinson. That's just how I see the world. Yeah, well, okay, that's fine. You can have Christian Leitner. <laughs> I'll take Devin Booker. I mean, what are, we, what are you doing? And off the top, you dismissed LeBron and Steph. How does that dream team look without Michael and Charles? Like, come on, like, we got we to gotta be fair, Colin, but go ahead. Sorry. Well, I mean, LeBron is going to be 40, but uh, whatever. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not an ageist. He's, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty good. He's pretty good, but, you, but, but Bird, was, Bird couldn't move. Bird threw his back out repaving his yeah, driveway the, and couldn't move anymore. Yeah, but Bird was like the seventh best player on that team. LeBron's the best on this team. That's kind of scary. Well, that's a testament to LeBron James. <laughs> Talk about okay. that. All NBA. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Finally, um, I, I do look at the Lakers, and I think I actually think they match up pretty well. I think old teams have to be situationally strategic. So, you know, I don't have a problem with, like, the Warriors sitting out a bunch of players so they're ready to go tonight. I, I think old players sit Embiid yeah. so he's ready for the – I think that's just that's, – that's called strategy, and I'm okay with it in all of yeah. our sports. You believe the Lakers are best served not doing what J-Mac and I say, which is lose tonight – Rest, LeBron. You're well, going to end up beating whoever you play. You guys are out of your minds. You guys are out of your minds. Okay. So this, hold on. I don't know how much time we have. Go ahead. But okay. First of all, you if you you're saying throw the game, yeah. Throw the game, and then play uh, play Thursday. Yeah. So on Thursday, you would either be playing the Kings, who swept you this year, because AD oddly cannot beat Demontis Sabonis. Or the Warriors, who just showed you a week ago, they can hit 26 threes in a game. So, but set that aside. That's not even why it's so ludicrous. The reason why it's so ludicrous is this. If we all agree that the only chance the Lakers have of making the NBA Finals is beating the Denver Nuggets, yeah. the only round they have any shot of doing it is round one. They can't – the, the only path, Colin, is Denver when you have as much rest as possible four days before game one, when LeBron and AD are both fully healthy as they are now, when you have two or three days between most games, and when LeBron is absolutely rolling and the Nuggets, oddly, are coming off a weird stretch where they blew a 17-point lead in a gotta-have-it game to the Spurs in game 81. Last year – all four of those games were locked going into the fourth quarter or in the fourth quarter. And what happened? LeBron, six weeks into the playoffs, was out of gas, and he didn't have great fourth quarters, and LeBron was ice cold from three. Yeah. Right now, he is healthy, and they would be rested between games because it's not every other night. I'm not saying the Lakers would beat the Nuggets. What I'm saying is the only chance they have of beating the Nuggets is is if they play them in round one. So, of course, that you win tonight, you get four days off, and you say, let's see if Jamal Murray can average 33 points a game as he did in the last time we played him in the playoffs. Let's see if LeBron shoots 21% from three as he did last time against the Nuggets in the playoffs. So, you don't lose tonight to have to play a must-win game against a team that owns you or a legend in Steph Curry. That's a banana's opinion. <laughs> it's an insane thing to say. Well, and you would not actually tell the Lakers to do it if you were coaching them. You well, wouldn't. I would go to Rob Palenka and suggest it because my take is that uh, the, it, 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 they went to Boston and won. I think they could win without LeBron on the floor tonight. I mean, they went to Boston without AD and LeBron and beat the Celtics. But does I, LeBron look tired? You see him on Sunday? The guy's out there. Zion Williams is drafted 15 years after him. As a, The idea is this is the greatest athlete to come in the league since LeBron. LeBron made him look like a small child. LeBron is rolling. Like, let's just, just keep it rolling, beat the Nuggets, and that would be spitting in the face of the basketball gods. <laughs> now, I, I don't know what you're, uh, you know, how much you believe in the basketball gods, but you don't want to test the basketball gods. Go win, handle your business, and let you think you think LeBron like if LeBron was given a, a truth serum and was asked, "Hey, if you're fully healthy, which you are right now, who's better, 
You are Nikola Jokic. How's he answering it? He wants this opportunity, mm -hmm. even if it's foolish. I think they win. I think they play the Nuggets, and then we see. First things first, he's a little under the weather, but nonetheless brought his A game today. I do appreciate right. your effort. Well, I just, I lost my voice. I apologize, but I feel great, and I'll see everybody in about 90 minutes. Thank you, Colin. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.